Good Thursday afternoon to you fellow taxidermists. Thank you for joining us at the Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. Uh, Brett Wingfield and Tom Matuska at your service. And uh, lately we've been proceeding on the Bobcat Project and yeah. we like to feed you with as much information as we can. <laughs> and some of you may think it's a little too much and we drag this on for weeks and weeks and weeks. But uh, the people that that review our information and kind of try the things that we show you seem to have pretty good luck and we get a lot of feedback. So we yeah. try to include yep. a whole lot of details in our um, presentation yeah. and things that maybe some of you have never thought of, some of you tried and forgot about, and we do that all the time. Uh, when you're in this business, as long as we've been, every once in a while somebody will come out with a new and innovative process or product mm -hmm. and it's something that, that we, we did, did 25 20, years yeah. ago and let go by the wayside and maybe it's time to reinstitute it too yeah, you know we for sure. we yeah. go back to some old methods and and products that we used to really have you know great success and luck and mm -hmm. bringing things to life and uh, we uh, let them go by the wayside when something new comes around so don't don't forget about yeah. the old methods and the, the old teachings and some of those older products are tremendous, tremendous oh, absolutely. products. Absolutely, there's some good stuff, or some of these. Um, I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> uh, just for instance, when it comes to the bobcat that we're doing, we've, this is uh, the Breakthrough uh, Mammal Taxidermy Manual. And I'm gonna look in here and tell you what the copyright date of that is. Um, and it was by Bob Williamson, Brent Housekeeper, Jim Hall, Ken Edwards. Um, Ken Edwards may be the only one of those that you still you know, <laughs> see true. out and about. Um, 1990, this is from 1990. A long is that time like ago. 32 years ago? Yeah. 32 years ago, um, yeah. this was written. And when we yeah. taught class, we always referred to this. It's oh, one gosh, of the yeah. mainstays in mammal taxidermy. Um, great book, still in publication by Breakthrough. Um, chapters in it um, include field care and skinning, principles of tanning, mouths and noses, legs, feet, and hooves, mounting mammal tails. I mean, it goes on and on. It's tremendous, information, yeah. tremendous book loaded with information. Ours is falling apart. I'm kind of holding the pages together <laughs> here as I'm holding up. Um, it seems but it's got a whole section which we'll even um, reference to today uh, on bobcat eyes, cat eyes, yep. um, pupil alignment, you know, different different principles that are going to put you in the ballpark and um, nothing's really changed with the animal over the, no. the last many, <laughs> right. many years. As long as it's been, he still hasn't evolved very far. Uh, another, uh, another good book is this was written and illustrated by John Blucci. John Blucci's a contributor. Regular, he yeah. texts in all the time. Um, John actually comprised and put this together. And John, let's just see how old you are now. Uh, this was done in, looks like, first edition published in 1999. 99, um, nice. And this is the art of the big cat. But when yeah. you're dealing with cats, there's just a lot of principles. And John has spent his lifetime um, dealing with cats and studying cats and comprising manuscripts. And yeah. uh, we wow. like these, we refer to them. In addition to our tremendous reference books, um, yeah. these can't be beat. We always say when we're, when we're teaching you about reference, um, we've got a cast over there. Yeah. Um, a study cast is very helpful, but the best thing you can have is a live animal. We should have the cat. Where's the cat? We need Lola. We need Lola. <laughs> Lola wouldn't hold still for very long. <laughs> Um, but if you don't have the live animal, pictures, you can resort to yeah. pictures, you can resort to videos, um, but by and large, a life-size animal is the best thing. Yeah, yeah, and um, we don't have it out, but we gave away the Atlas of Animal Anatomy. That's another really good one. Great book for the um, internal workings with the muscles yeah. and the, and yeah. the um, I did have it out here. Um, muscles and the skeletal makeup of the animal is really, really important. Whether you're working with a, a dog, a deer, or a cat, or whatever it happens to be, you yeah. need to um, arm yourself with all of these things 
um, and just study them as you're putting them together. And I always say, I said it last week, um, people ask the hardest thing to do, and it's, I always say the hardest thing to do is the thing you know the least about. But yeah. with a good cast, maybe a live animal, um, good reference books, good photos, um, you're going to come much closer much, to realism closer. than you will without any of that. Yeah, yeah. And like you mentioned before, the big cat book, um, just because it's a big cat, we're doing a little cat, um, still cats to cats, it's, it's pretty close. So we, uh, great information. We draw a lot of correlations between species and I think come pretty close. Yeah. You know, a coyote is not a dog, but a dog and a coyote have extremely close yep. relationships when it comes to eyes and attitudes and some yep. ears, some not, um, mouths and lips. And um, we had a, one of my first classes ever, I had a fella that would come down and he was working on his coyote and it was a snarling coyote. He insisted on doing one of the you know, with the big old arches sure. in his jaws. Yeah. And he'd come every day and he'd say, that's not how Wendell does it. And I'd say, who's Wendell? He says, my dog. I go home and I slap my dog. And he said, he doesn't <laughs> snarl like that. So he was trying to make his coyote look like Wendell does. Um, anyway, uh, you can go to that extent if you want to. But um, we Wendell. draw a lot of correlations. And, and a house cat is not a bobcat, but it it's going to work for me pretty yeah, darn close. You change the colorations and the attitudes can be very much the same. Yeah. And like yeah. any of our broadcasts, um, make sure to like and share, like and share, like and share. Yeah. And today we're going to give away, um, this is a kind of cool hat that I picked off the hat rack. Um, it has your very favorite supply company <laughs> in a ni nice little leather applique on the front. It's a very dark green camouflage um, that's a classy hat it's a fitted hat too isn't it stretch fit oh yeah oh fancy that fit my big noggin <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. like and share like and share um, and it's from last week's winner that liked and shared the most is going to get this hat at the end we'll announce it at the end did I say that right you did that is correct okay uh, Little overcast today, had a nice day. Oh, um, little it break is. from the heat. We had a really nice rain this weekend. Feels like it might be thinking about fall. Maybe just a little the bit. The nights are getting cooler and I know all of you yeah. out there are, know it's coming mm -hmm. and, and uh, I don't know too many taxidermists that aren't avid hunters and fishermen and this yeah. time of the year your blood kind of gets you know, yep. going a little bit flowing, and Decent those floor. cool nights are kind of yep. getting you stirred up, I know. It's time. It, it happens around it here. It is time. And it'll be here before you know it. The Velvet oh. Bucks are already showing oh, yeah. up. We're Had getting call calls on uh, Velvelock, yep. Yep. a product that can be very helpful in preserving um, antlers in velvet. Um, yep. Velvet Preserve, Antler Velvet Preserve yep. um, is another one, Knobloch product. and. Uh, so we start getting those calls and it kind of jogs you our memory what, that wow yeah. falls here yeah people are out west hunting we'll be here i think minnesota opens in a couple weeks it's it's here it's on us whenever we taught the taxidermy school and we would ask students you know why do you want to be a taxidermist oh i love to hunt and fish love to hunt and fish <laughs> you might be sitting in your shop skinning yeah. deer till three in the morning yep. and not getting able to light hunt and fish uh, but all taxidermists seem to have a love of nature, and that's, that's what got you it. here in the first place. Yep. Um, today, I think we're going to continue on with the bobcat. Mm -hmm. And last week, we might have left off about with uh, putting leg rods in. Yep, I think we put one in. And we're a little behind today. <laughs> um, we meant to have him a little bit farther along. But we're going to put in one more leg rod for you, I think, yep. and uh, show you how that process. It's going to be a, a duplicate of last week, but we'll make it go very fast. Yes, Caitlin. We've got a question from Michael Hawkins on YouTube, and Michael would like to know, do you custom mix your own colors for the finishing on the nose, or do you use layering of colors to achieve the final color? Um, I think we could do it oh. very easily with stock colors, but we yeah. usually end 
end up mixing stuff. Yeah, that's, it seems like, especially with those gravity feed airbrushes, it's just so easy to add a little tint more of one color or another. But um, I think I think we plan to do a little finish work on this as sure. we get a little further sure. down we'll the road. Sure, we'll carry and, this the whole way and yeah. you'll get to see. Um, we might even do a couple of them where we can do a, yeah. a pan pastel is a real fun way to finish. I had a that person well. today call that said they do all of their switch completely oh. to all their bird bills and feet with pan pastels. Hmm. And that works well for some people, yeah. um, not for everybody. Yeah. It, it's the kind of thing that you got to have a little practice with and be willing to not come up with the results you hope yeah. the first time. That was my experience anyway. Yeah. Uh, Pan Pastels are an excellent, excellent product, and some people just don't want a dirty an airbrush, and you can you can be really precise with them and get really soft colors on your yeah. bird beaks and noses and eye work and all over, yeah. so that's uh, we'll, a good product. We'll cover those. I think back in our, in our, our, our archive, um, I think there is even a little thing that we did on Pan on Pastels cat -nose. that specifically for a bobcat sure. nose. Sure, sure, sure. Yep. And you can that. airbrush, you can oil paint, you can pan pastel, yep. you can acrylic, um, you can brush paint. There's no anything in this business there really isn't a right or wrong. It's what works for you to give you the best results better than the guy down the street. You know, yep. um, whatever works for you. If you're, man, that works so good, I'm going to cover it with mud first and then spray on yeah. green dye or yeah. whatever, whatever ever technique you come up with, we hear them all. We hear, yeah. we hear things that are so bizarre that people <laughs> either tanning Whereby. or coloring yeah. or softening hair or whatever it happens to be, we hear a lot of, lot of things mm -hmm. and some of them we even go as far as to try and we've yep. done a lot of different things yeah. but um, some of you out there have some great tips. Don't be afraid to um, text in any of your ideas and text in any of your questions. We'll try to yeah. answer them to the best of our ability and steer you in the right direction. Yep. Yep. So if you want to take your um, bobcat and give yep. them a little idea on the, a leg rod on the front here. Yep, so we've got, I think this is the one we put in on camera last week. Um, and very simple. We just augered in a little trench after we posed everything the way we wanted it. Um, you push the rod in, poured some Bondo on top of it, and really, really firm. Made a made, really strong leg. Yeah, really nice connection. Um, you can see we've done that with this leg. Um, we've got a little bit of a gap here. We can fill um, some touch-ups with foam. We can, we can come back and catch, but that one has been done as well as this one. Um, so we've got that one in place as well, and we just need to finish this one. We need to get one more rod in there so he'll stand nice and sturdy. And you could um, foam that in. Yeah. Um, foam oh, yeah, it real, real well. Um, um, the auto body putty is super strong, and it makes a strong leg. Make yeah. sure you're not going to have to take down the width of this leg um, if there's auto body yeah. putty in there because it's going to be way harder than if it's foam, and we have done yeah, that. It's we yes we have <laughs> um, and this is going to go up on here like so one of the things that you mentioned and nice with our the rods that we have have here this this was a 10 gauge annealed mm -hmm. wire i believe um real important to keep these parallel parallel and perpendicular to the floor so we are we've got these fairly straight this one's going to come feed over into here now, a lot of times you are going to be responsible for maybe this will go home to the customer in two pieces and yeah. to fit in his car, whatever it happens to be, you're going to take the animal off and he's going to try putting it back on when he gets home. And if those rods are splayed out at different oh, yeah. angles to one another, it's very, very, very difficult. And especially when you have something like a big sheep or a mountain lion and they're threaded yeah. rods then they're going you know, yeah. down in and, and trying to bend them and it doesn't it's, work at all. Yeah. And on our big animals, we have even gone to the extent of taking PVC pipe sleeves mm -hmm. and putting them on our, our threaded rods and then drilling an oversized hole in our rock and auto body and puttying those sleeves down yeah. in 
and then they feed in and feed off really, yeah. really nice. And if you're doing it for the customer, you don't have to um, struggle, and it sounds much better than those, yeah. those uh, threaded rods going against your fiberglass, thin fiberglass yeah. sheet. So that's a good, good idea too. That works really well. And really if your really rod, well. is, if your leg is really nice and straight, um, you can drill it up in also. Oh, you can sure. put it in yeah. your drill. Yeah. Just make sure you don't have to make a corner. Yep, yep. Um, that works. That works really well too. Um, we've got that foot. I can see is a little up which we might just bend that down just a touch. And we're also going to um, change his toe angle too. With the, we'll take those toes off. And next so. week will probably be the yeah. toes if we don't get to it today. Yeah, but I think he's fairly square. He might need to go about right there. He's gonna put that leg pretty close. And you'll wanna make sure that you have your legs exactly where you want them when you put those rods in because once you do um, that's really going to determine where he's going to stand um, i think if we suck that leg all the way down it will mm -hmm. it'll go in there he pretty good nice he'll stand nice here. and straight and look at it from several different angles from from the front corners of his eyes also level up his his shoulders his hips and make sure that you have a nice flow but um i think and always make sure your that. base is straight too that's another yeah. thing Absolutely. Um, I just pushed it back here, so I, yep. it's possible and, I'm not. And um, I'm going to turn it around and actually show them, Kate. You can, you can come back here a little, it might have been a week ago. Um, we put, it's really important, we put a level line on the back of the, on the, back of the base because um, as it comes on and off the stand, um, this makes a big difference. If we were to bring it down here, and then bring the bobcat back around, you can see he's nowhere near straight. Growl. <laughs> so by having that reference on the back, we can always get him back to our intended height, which is right about there. Um, that reference so, or that level line, we do that on all of our wall mounts, our big animals and yeah. things like that, if it's going on and the wall, because a customer I'm grab has a, a difficulty making them level. Um, and we typically can do that with just a, a little torpedo level. And another really good idea, as you're doing your alterations, um, it doesn't hurt once you get his torso about where you want it to bring a level line up to the body of the animal as well. And just mark that right on the body. We would do that as well. So those are just some, just some reference points so you can get him back because taking him off the base and putting him on and taking him off, sometimes we get him just a little bit Now we've different. come a long ways from our stock mannequin out of the supply company. Oh yeah. This was a standing on all fours. Next week we should have one that was to show them. where we started. Yeah. Um, Cause this was Before a and major, after. major alteration. It's not difficult like we showed you from the beginning. Um, it's not difficult and we just, Bent it real easy. It was originally yeah. you have to put that base completely around with it too, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. Two different yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. And that's a front high. Yep. Uh, we've got a question on YouTube. Wouldn't muscle reference photos be a good idea at this point? Do y'all use much? We do. Yep. That, um, can you get that? Alex can you get it? Yeah. There's one on your desk. Oh, uh, Alex and Abby? I saw it somewhere. Um, that's, Maybe not. That was the book that we gave. That's probably the best muscle reference, unless you had the carcass right next to you, which is great. That would be a wonderful, wonderful tool is to have the We have carcass even out. gone to the extent, mainly on deer, I think, mm -hmm. um, but we have taken skinned animals, yeah. fresh skinned animals, like hindquarters or shoulders. Yeah. Um, oh, you have one there. And actually made a mold and you can make an easy you can make an auto body mold or you can make a plaster mold of of just the shoulder of the animal um, and that's a white tailed deer right yep yeah um, that's a great example and this was uh, looks like plaster i can see plaster yep. um, remnants here and plaster was just poured over the carcass of the deer you can do that with a bobcat. 
You can do it with a bobcat leg. Um, yeah. You can do it with the hindquarters, and it will show you all the muscle groups. Yeah. Um, and this just hangs on our wall for if we're going to do a, a, for instance, maybe a long pedestal of a deer or something like that. Um, yeah. We can take that full shoulder. We can compare what the sculptor interpreted, yeah. and. Uh, put that in according to what we have found. Um, this is the book we gave away last week. And if I can find a cat in here, I think it's actually a lion. And I got a snarly face, I got legs. <laughs> um, but look at the, the hind quarter of a lion, yeah. shows you all the muscle groups and what we do a lot of times, it depends on the animal. A bobcat, it's not gonna show very much. Somebody will feel it if they were to feel sure. of it. Um, a deer might be more important. Um, African, African animals, it's yeah. very important. But we'll actually take the mannequin and if it's not you know, superimposed on there, we will take a Sharpie marker and we will sketch on what yeah. we observe here and we'll even use something like that on an African animal. Yeah, um, yeah sure. Yeah, those are this is uh, the beginnings of a sable pedestal. And that's what we've started to do here. So is that where like your next foam would go to hold on to the muscle detail? Um, we don't use that a whole lot much anymore. Um, since the advent of Pro One Hide Paste, yeah, yeah, um, we have Pro One Hide Paste is an excellent adhesive, and we used to. Uh, many of you still do, I know, but try this. Um, we used to mount our animals, and we had strips of cardboard, we oh, had man. strips of foam, we had brad a million nails. pins. <laughs> we used to have a brad nailer where we brad nailed in all the indentations. Yeah. If you didn't have the right Brad nails, they would rust after a couple yeah, years yeah. because of they the salt and the height. Spots, um, yeah. We used to fill them full of more hardware. <laughs> they never passed through a, an airport security camera. And the secret and a big time saver for you is to thin your hides yes. thinner than yeah. you think you can get them. Get them really, really thin. Yeah. A good hide paste. Dermagrip works very yeah. well for us. Pro One. A lot of people like Pro One, yeah. and we use a lot of Pro One. Um, a nice coat of Pro One, and you probably don't have to even go over it. We always double check them the next day, but with your fingers, find all of the valleys and the muscles that you carved in on the face of a deer. Yeah. Um, you have that face skin so thin that, yeah. it, not tight, make sure that your skin That's, is not tight yeah. on your mannequin. Um, and just by pushing it in with your finger one, one or two times, and you get real good to where you look forward to doing it. Um, pressing the detail into all your animals, all your yeah. jaw muscles, and. Yeah, um, uh, it, it works exceptionally well. And again, I think you gave a very important tip, not too tight. The tighter they are, the more the, the leather wants to drum away from the skin, but a properly sized mannequin um, to the skin that you have, and your hide paste should do that work And that's for the you. same with ears. When we do mm -hmm. uh, deer ears, elk ears, yep. African mm -hmm. animals with mm -hmm. big ears, yep. drumming is a nightmare, and it'll just wreck your day. You got everything yep. looking good. You go home, next day you come, ah, drummed ears. Um, the secret to that is not sloppy, but a nice loose fit and a good water-based hide paste. We have used every epoxy known to man. <laughs> yeah. we, have, yeah. we have had products that were $10 a pair of ears just to glue them in, yeah. only to have it drum before. A nice, comfortable fit, a good sized ear liner in the right shape for that species, and yeah. a good hide paste like Dermagrip or Pro One is gonna do it for you. Yeah, makes a great, great ear. Um, yeah. That's, we kind of wandered a little bit. That's good information. That's, that's really good and, and nice that we touched on that because we're going to come back to some of those things in the fit of the cat of the overall mannequin. We've got to, we'll do that probably next week for them. We'll show them a final test fit um, and show you what we want for, we could fit it if it was tight and pull it and use our stitches to tighten them up or 
um, a proper fit where we don't have to rely on stitches and pliers and come and the, along. The to test fit is up. important. Like we were um, contemplating getting it out and show it to you again today, but um, that's a hide that we tanned and it's in the freezer. We've had it out yeah. two or three times now. And yeah. you know, sooner or later, if you keep doing this forever, you know, it's gonna it's probably yeah. loosen up. You're yeah. gonna start slipping some hair. So we'll wait till next week to get him out and then we'll just proceed with the mounting yeah. process because the hair's really good. It was a good cat when it came in and was in good yeah. shape, but we don't need to leave it lay around and yeah. abuse yeah. it. Um, I, do we want to do our hind leg quick? You go do the, I'll start mixing you the Bondo and you can Perfect. drill a little slot. Yeah. Um, and we'll proceed just like we did last week. Um, getting this in we know that our hide is is opened up through the back end it's case skinned so i think we're probably going to leave that open which means that we can really anchor this we're not going to cut it off so i think we'll turn this we'll start up here in the hip and i'm just going to bend see if i can get that upright for you kate um, we're just going to bend him We'll bend that wire to. One thing to note too is all of our life sizes come with wires in the feet. So you can always, if you know you're going to alter one of our forms, you can always request the back left yeah. to not have wire in and we will just leave it out of that. Some people like to include it in the box and they can add it later or whatnot, but otherwise you can always request if you're going to alter a form without leg rods. Yes, and that's, that's what we did with this one and it worked out really well for us because you can see we made quite a few cuts. That before and after would have been fun. We should grab a mannequin. I think something like that will work. Now, um, it's nice if we can come back and I'm gonna sit down with him on my lap and marker? a little marker. Yeah. And we'd have to find here. you one. Um, this might, might get me. I got a felt tip if you want. You got one? Oh yeah, that'll work. That'll show better for them. Another thing, when we put these forms together, you're working with four legs and don't try to bondo all four at the same time. If you wanted to tack one in place, we do that sometimes, but you'll get yourself a little overwhelmed and you're gonna have a mess if you try to do them all at the same time. So we do slow down a little bit and do one at a time. Once one's really nice and strong, you're not gonna break it trying to do the second and third one. Hopefully. Hopefully. We have done that before. Um, I think if it can be done wrong, we've probably done it and learned from our mistakes. There's so many I remember many bought a 10-foot brown bear that you and I were sewing on and we busted uh, yeah. the front leg after, after we were sewing up. After the whole thing was sewn up, the whole thing, we only had to stretch it a little bit further. Well, Mark Matuska was here, yes, number he was. one son, and, and he and I cut it, and you cut it yeah. all the way up the, right up the back outside of the, of the shoulder, yep. yep, and parted it, scraped all the dextrin base hide glue out of there, and augered in and replaced the rod. Yep, rebondoed it all back together, sewed it back up. That was that was fun.
was loud. Mm, that's good. Probably should have turned off my microphone. Um, um, I gave you a little spray nozzle over there if you want. Oh, good. Um, that's a pretty small, so that's one of our cuts all bits. Cuts all bits. If you've never used cuts all bits um, for doing taxidermy work, it's great. They're, I think, for wood carvers. Um, great for carving. Um, we have cuts all files, we have cuts all bits. Um, I think they're like, what do they call them, an eighth inch shank. Um, this is, sounds like something you'd get in a prison. <laughs> um, this is a, uh, the file, the coarse file. We don't do any kind of alterations without one of these. And uh, these come in an assortment of bits. Um, you fish people have to have bits compared to what you get at the hardware store yeah. and the Dremel bits, these cuts all are exceptional. They are, they really are. And that flat file, um, I wouldn't want to do taxidermy work without it. Um, Oops, I better be mixing. You, you, do you have a question? Go ahead. Uh, Michael Sears would like to know, was this cat dorsal skinned? No, he's actually case skinned. He was cut from hind foot to hind foot. Yep. And, and we do that oftentimes when we're not sure what our pose yeah. is going to be. That's a safe, easy way to get it out. Um, and in this case, um, I think we're going to be able to leave him case skinned and we don't have to worry about hiding that seam in that even hair down the top of the back. You could dorsal cut him if you needed to, but I bet we're going to find a way not to. Um, I'm going to tuck that. You mentioned okay. Mark and the bear. And I remember, because I wasn't very old, but Mark was really not very old. And he just got older yesterday, didn't he? Birthday. Birthday. Oh. Big birthday. Big 40. Yeah. Big 40 birthday. years old. Mark Matuska. Um, pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Yeah. I bet he was less than 15 when that, we did that bear. Huh? Oh, probably. I bet younger than that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, while he's doing that, I'm going to brief you one more time on the auto body putty um, process. And we use um, Auto Body Master Lightweight Body Filler. You might have your own kind. This is just from our local um, hardware store here. Um, there's about three places in town that, that have it. Um, we refer to it as Bondo, but it's a different brand, not the Bondo brand. Now. Auto body putty is just that, it's putty. It's meant to be spackled on, kind of spatulated, kind of. Um, it's a little too thick to pour into your channel, so we're gonna put a little polyester resin in it. The more polyester resin you put in, the slower it's gonna set, but we'd like it to be a little pourable. So you got plenty of time. And I have a nice pourable mixture here that I think will go right down into the channel and around that wire. And it's going to go through a, a jelly stage, kind of a gelatin stage. Are you ready for it? I think so. Um, a gelatin stage, and when it does, you can just carve it off with a knife or a rasp and then let it harden up. They recommend an inch of cream hardener per golf ball size. I figure I got a couple of golf balls in here, so two inches. We're going to give it a little more than that just to speed things up. Now, another thing you could do is you could warm that wire up with a oh, sure. hair dryer or a torch or a heat gun um, and any warmth will set this auto body putty up really rapidly. Yeah. And we're going to have him flat like this. It's a little hard for the camera to see it, but um, we'll keep it flat because that's going to be pretty liquidy and when Tom pours it in, we don't want it all to end up running off onto the table. So I've just stuck a little bag of clay under his front shoulder to hold him Hold him there for a minute while that sets up. Why does Tom have to do this stuff? <laughs> and make sure you don't have any marbling in here. Marbling is when you have stuff that your catalyst didn't come in contact with. And I use the blue catalyst 
Um, I think in the front was the white, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, doesn't matter the color. The color is mainly to uh, make sure that you got it everywhere. And now you'll just proceed to pour that all the way around that wire. And we'll tuck it in. It, it, it's helpful to have a little tool or a popsicle stick that you can kind of coax it down because um, as you pour over it, it will trap air, which will make a weak spot. So um, we'll come in and kind of work this. I have a little on the this material thick side so it would set up faster, which is going to leave some. We'll get it all tucked in. It'll be good. And just kind of work it down, work out some of the air. Now don't try to get it off by smearing it. Um, it will uh, carve off really nice and clean. And um, you, we mentioned last week, you mentioned it earlier, um, we could do this with foam too. Um, we could reinforce that with foam. Someone I think last week was, was concerned about fumes from the auto body mm -hmm. putty, which definitely will, will um, get your attention. But I filled um, your little crack there too. Perfect. Now we'll just let that harden up, and then um, we'll rasp it off here in just a minute. Watch pot never boils. That's right. <laughs> now I'm just trying to force it down in along that wire. And this is this is relatively easy um, with a small mammal like this and an annealed wire. It's easy to bend and easy to turn. Um, we would do the same thing if this was a sheep or a, a big bear, um, but much, much more rigid um, support. You use a lot of ready rod yep. on big animals. Yeah, and that's, that's always a chore to bend. Um, and like you said earlier, keep parallel and um, lots of stuff going on. This little process is a 10 or 15 minute process to do this in a life-size animal is a half a day or more. I'm just going to fill up some of your screw holes too. Perfect. I got lots of those. It's starting to gel. Perfect. Won't be long now. Now that looks like a mess, and it is, but it's going to rasp right off. Yes. <clears throat> the trick is just making sure that Kate doesn't ask a, a question that gets us off into another. And don't forget, don't go answer <laughs> yeah, the phone now or you're going to have a big old problem. Yeah, if we forget now, if we get distracted now, um, it is a mess, but you'll see in just a minute this comes right off. Um, so and then it's easy to shape to your contour yep. of your animal also. Yeah. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, Fred Burtz would like to know, he happened to leave his clay open and it got rock hard. What would be the best way to bring it back to the soft stage? A rag with water? Yeah, yeah, that's, um, uh, assuming it's some sort of a stoneware or a critter clay or a rehydrating clay, um, yeah, we'll do that often, just put a... I got out a bag water. of critter clay, um, week ago and yeah. and it was usable but firmer than I like and I just took a uh, we have a whole box of rags here that we use in the shop and I just soaked it with water and squeezed it out and threw it in the bag and um, we got a new bag today but I got it out and it worked it was good yeah um, almost uh, another another good thing for clay is and I think you'd mentioned it a long time ago is a crock um, some sort of a damp storage. I've never had a crock, but uh, but crocks, I'm told, 
store moisture in their walls. Yeah. And it's a good, uh, you know, crock is good yeah. to store clay. Cheyenne Gandy would like to know, will the clay work be shown for this mount? I can't wait to see it finished. Clay work like eyes will, ears will, probably the nose and the feet. Yeah. We have all yep. of that to in, do yet. In a few different stages, we were going to do some eyes today. Um, I think, were we? We can. I think, if we go fast. Um, and John Bellucci is just tuning in. John, you'll have to make sure to go check the beginning of this video. <laughs> <laughs> this is not quite ready, but I can trim some of the big stuff. But you can see how soft it still is. Um, it's starting to trim decent, but it'll rasp really well here in a few minutes. Yeah, John's a little intimidating to be watching when you're trying to mount a bobcat because John has forgot more about cats than I will ever know in my entire life. Could, could we say that he wrote the book? He did write the book. <laughs> you guys are sharing. What are they sharing? A login? They're sharing their login with John Blucci. Yeah. Yeah. They're logged into us, right? Oh, to his, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. There we go. I think we can rasp now. Um, this is starting to get pretty firm, um, easily carved. I'll, I'll hit it with the foam rasp and make short work of this. And then we can get on to eyes and lots of little pins and screws in this hock area holding it in place so we don't want to disturb it just yet. And that's going to give you a really nice, strong leg. Um, it's posed the way we want it. We might have to foam a little bit on yep, the heel I or reshape so. the heel or clay it. Um, but you yeah. don't have to worry about breaking it now. And be very careful right now, although it seems like it's firmed up, it would be pretty easy to break for the next 10 or 15 minutes. But So be cautious with it. Um, a little bit right on the bottom. Oh, look at oh, that. Did you get it? Pops right off. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, do you want to stick him on and see how he yeah. sits? Yes. You need it. We probably may. Probably another hole, don't you? Might. There is a hole in there, but I'm guessing it's probably not going to line up. Bend that wire just a little bit. I think I am going to need a hole if you can mark it when I, oh, I see. bring that straight. Hold him. I'm going to bend this over yeah. just, just a touch. Okay. This is your spot. I think that's where he wants to go down. Got it. Aha. <laughs> Hold on. Come back here. Yeah. 
too much pressure on that. Might be a little on the long side too. I think it's just a little, yeah, right in there. And we can adjust that later also. Yeah. But that's going to kind of give us a start. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Now, the things we would do now is um, probably finish the body, which, yep. which you don't need to see. Um, it's going to be basically um, taking out any of these big holes that people are going to feel through the skin. Yeah. Um, may add a little bit of de detail, like maybe his trapezius muscle yeah. up here a little bit in the hind leg. Yeah, a um, little in the neck. We haven't shaped that. Um, and you don't want to do that yet. after you set eyes because they're going to fall out. We right. are going to, yeah. but you would not want to. Yeah. Um, we would probably cut a lip slot. And for yeah. a lip slot, you can use um, you can use power tools if you want to. Yeah. A lot of you will use a small um, drill bit if you're careful. Yeah, teeny uh, tiny on a Dremel. Bit. Um, we do that sometimes with deer. Absolutely, that works really well. A knife will work. Yeah. Um, one of these little guys works pretty good. These little triangular, I think they're called a ceramic tool, is it? Yep. Um, where you can, you know where the lip's going to go. You're going to just score it. And, and the angle that you're going to cut that lip slot is going to be probably a 45 or, or less up under the yep. top of the mouth. That way you can tuck your lip skin up in there and you, it's strong enough up here that you don't bust that out. Um, if you did it straight in, um, it would separate the top and the bottom yeah. jaws and look funny. So about a 45 at that kind of angle would be very good. And you want it, you have to correlate the thickness of your slot with the thinness of your skin. Yeah. And you want your lip skin ultra thin, Paper thin. Um, yeah. don't worry about holes to a degree because it's going to get tucked up in there. And yeah. it's hairless skin anyway, so if you do have a hole, a little piece of epoxy clay or epoxy sculpt will hide any lip skin holes. Yeah. Um, but do make it as thin as you can so that you can tuck it into a thin s slot. And yeah. when you're tucking your lip skin, um, little tools like, um, we have a whole array of these little uh, chrome spatula. Oh man, kind I of don't like know if I'd want to do uh, what we do without that Dental set. tools. Yep. And they come in, there's a lot of different sets and they're real inexpensive. Um, we use them for um, clay work and Everything. molding things. We use them all, all kinds. Of, there's yeah. little sets, big slits, sets, all kinds of them. And usually the one that you really, really want, you gotta buy the whole set to get it. And that's the only one you're gonna use. Yeah. But uh, these make, these are very, very thin and they make really good tucking Great tools. Yeah. Um, so you want a thin slot and you want thin skin and you're yeah. gonna put glue in that lip and you're gonna tuck that skin up in there. And yeah. we'll show you when we do the mounting process, but, but you'll be, a lot of people say, how do I know where it goes? Um, you're going to know where the center of the lip goes because of the little uh, V that comes out of the, from down by the nose. You're going to know where that goes on the top. You're going to know the center of the bottom. Now you have it divided in half. So then you pull your lot of lip. There's a lot of lip in a bobcat. Yeah. Like we told you the other day that you can actually take that head and slide it in through the mouth hole. So yeah. you know that we've got that much lip skin. Yeah, that has to, to go, go in, in this little lip much. slot. Yeah. And there was a, I always tell people there was a sphincter muscle and a sphincter muscle is what allows your lips to go like this. <laughs> That's a yeah. sphincter muscle. Yeah. Openings yeah. of your body have sphincter muscles. This lip has a sphincter muscle, but you're going to have this big hoop, hoop of skin which you fleshed off the sphincter muscle. So this is yeah. your sphincter muscle and you're going to have to compress and push and make that all go in there wrinkle free. Yep. And on a and mouth it. that big, that's not sometimes the easiest thing to do. Yep. Taxi, taxi, taxi. Taxi. It, it does help too um, in the back because you're going to you're going to have two thicknesses of skin in that back corner. 
Um, sometimes we like to go in with a little tool like this and just rock it around just to give a little bit more room for where that skin turns in the back corner um, allows just a little bit more space. Um, so that's, that's a, a good point because you got tip. lots of skin to go. This is the same yeah. whether it's a deer or a fox or a bobcat, whatever yep. it happens to be, um, the lip tucking procedure is the same no matter what animal yep. it is for us. Um, and then, so you're going to cut your lip slot. The next thing we would probably do is nose. We'll have the, yep. we'll do this all for you, um, or probably have it yep. done for next week. Yep. Um, but you're going to do your nose and. Um, you can look at your cat at home, your tabby cat. Um, we have bobcat reference noses. I couldn't grab one in time, so I've got a uh, mountain lion, but this is the great configuration. Yeah, that's tremendous. That will show you, again, 99% of the same basic shape that you're going to use up here is in that, and that's bigger for your bigger for you to see and understand as you're trying to recreate this. And there's a lot of different ways to do noses on an animal like this. You can buy artificial noses like this, Yep. cut this off, put this on. That can have its own problems because um, they can go on crooked. That's, yeah. Um, you can get uh, um, the heads with the noses already on them if mm -hmm. you like those. Yep. Um, there are uh, other people making good heads out there with yep. uh, Brandon O'Hare. Yeah. Um, has a nice great, bobcat head great. with a uh, cast nose in place. Yep. Um, we used to always cut our noses off and rebuild them with clay, like critter clay. Yep. Let the skin dictate the shape of the nose. And with good reference, like a good cast of a bobcat, and the skin filled with clay, you sh we sh used to shape all the nostrils and everything. Yeah. That's a good way to do it. Um, we'll um, use this nose, but we're going to shrink it down so that this is kind of the shape and size of a bobcat this size, but we got to put skin over it. Yes. So we don't yep. want a big bulbous nose. So we're going to shrink this down. And you can carve out that nose with any array of tools that you have like this. Um, the little drill bit little will do a good job. drill bit, Dremel bit. And anything that you kind of make that isn't natural, if the bit gets away from you, you could, uh, you can always epoxy it when you do yep. finish work. Yeah, and we'll show them that. Um, we'll, we'll get this, when we get the skin out, and maybe, um, even though next week we're going to, we'll probably have that done, we could, we have a change out head, we could come back and show, show them, them how to That'd do that. That'd be a good thing nose. to do. That wouldn't be and have this idea. done to cut up, yeah. cut some time. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we want to look at eyes and yeah. see what we yeah. can do there? Yeah. Um, so we've got our bobcat eye. This is, this happens to be a reflective eye. Um, and assuming that we have all of these other things done, we've, we've rasped the form, we've done some of these other things. Um, now it would be time to, to set an eye. And uh, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our base fits. And, and this ours is, is a little just tight. a little tight. And I brought you something. Um, so, oh, very nice. If it'll fit. Um, very nice. And, I, and we'll talk a little bit about eyes. Um, just look at the catalog. Um, this is all bobcat eyes. That's all bobcat eyes. Um, the, list of eyes is overwhelming you know it's just you can't especially for a beginner it's going to be very confusing for you i'm going to open that up ahead. just just a little bit here my uh, dremel doesn't want to go uh oh <laughs> Now, what he's doing is there are, there's such an array of eyes. Some have a big white band around them called the scleral membrane. Some of them have just the iris portion. And as a mannequin maker, you can't, you can't design a form for every style of eye. 
If you're going to use a convex concave eye um, that gives you just the iris size, they're going to swim in here. Yeah. Um, if you use the largest white banded eye, they're not going to go in very well. The, the reflective eyes have a larger band on them. That's why Brett just took the Dremel and just softly went around the rim on the inside so that these will index in. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to take just a little bit out in the very front. I'm going to slide in here just a tiny bit because I didn't want to get that Dremel too close and actually distort the, the uh, mannequin itself. Um, so I'm going to take out just a little bit in the front corner. And that's going to eventually be a little spot that our nictitating membrane would slide into. I might, can I move you a little bit? Yeah. Let's see in the back of your head. If you oh. did it like that, and then she can kind of zoom over your shoulder, I think. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. So we're just going to open that. You have a nice back of the head, front. by the way. <laughs> uh, is it five o'clock yet? <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> Uh, there we go. So we've just got the front corners of that opened up, and now um, our white banded eye will sit in there nicely. Um, we'll sit forward in there. I'm going to open that angle up just a little bit. Um, do you want to talk to him about angles? Um, I'm going to tell you what John Bellucci says. Ooh, there you go. Um, Predators being predators, and uh, you can kind of, as a taxidermist, you know, um, you, you do squirrels, you do um, coyotes, you do deer, you do all kinds of different creatures, um, and we're all worried about angles. You know, deer are in at 45 degrees, this animal's in at this kind of degree, birds are in at this degree. Um, the thing that you need to know is that there's prey, predator animals and prey animals. A rabbit, for instance, is worried about being eaten. He has to see behind him so his eyes are out the side of his head, you know, so he can have great peripheral vision. Um, a bird, a fish, also has great peripheral vision. Their eyes are not like headlights facing forward. Um, cats, bobcat, for instance, is a predator. Um, their eyes are very focused forward, um, not 100% straight forward, and there's all kinds of different degrees that people come up with. Um, I think in, in the mammal book it says 10 degrees, you know, tip 10 degrees. Yeah. I don't know if anybody can measure that other than an optometrist, if you could hold a bobcat <laughs> steady. Um, but when we're instructing predators, um, lions, bobcats, um, coyotes, fox, we will set them in straight with the nose and then angle them back very, very slightly. Sure. Um, if the rim of your eye is sticking out past your eye orbit, where Brett's cutting right there, if the rim of your eye is hindering and sticking out through your skin, you are too straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm because of the height of that reflective eye, this mannequin wasn't really sculpted for a reflective eye. I'm having to open up the back just a little bit. It, was, it would have been a little on the buggy side um, if I wouldn't have opened up behind because of the height that we have here, right here. The height of the white area is pushing this eye a little bit forward. So now you can see um, it's not protruding too far out here. I've just recessed it a little bit so it sits back. So I think that's going to give us some room to work. Um, you don't want that really tight. You want to be able to move that just a little bit. So I've opened that up and I'll do the same thing to the other side. Now another thing is we have this cat on its base. Um, the one thing that I don't think ever works is to hold the mannequin in your lap <laughs> and set eyes. You might get them set laying in your lap, but when you put them back on the wall, the chances of you having 
a good focused look yeah. at where that head is in relationship to the the whole piece would be very difficult. Um, so you can start putting them on your lap, but eventually get them on the wall. That's such a good point because it's really easy to work on that in your lap on these small animals, but um, boy, you can really get something off. Um, and worth saying too, I opened up the back of the eye at the same time because I want to set them both. I would rather set them to their proper depth and angle both and then proceed building the muscle individually around each then I would put one in and build the muscle all the way around it and then put the other one in so um, you can get two great looking eyes but they won't look the they same. will yeah exactly I'm turn that just a little bit so you can see a little more of the front of the cat yeah there you go okay um, now um, I'm gonna grab a little bit of clay and this will probably be a little bit of a rough set um, we would come back and and once we get the skin around it we will adjust all of these things but and now is the time like to, to be them in. picking out your attitude we want this um, bobcat pretty laid back he's not stalking anything he's not afraid of anything he's just woke up and is walking down the the hill um, so look at your reference pictures and the one thing that you're going to notice on every single picture here even the alert ones um, is the relationship of the top lid to the pupil the top lid in most of these pictures not all but most of these pictures covers up the first maybe third of the pupil um, that is a sunshade, and it shades that uh, that lid, shades that pupil from light. And some pupils, um, depends on what kind of eye you have, there's a lot of the glass eyes out there have a really fine slit of a pupil. Um, the uh, reflective eyes from Russia have a little more of a oval pupil. And now, even though these are a little more oval, there does seem to be a top and a bottom. They're a little bit more vertical. And so we and would look at that angle. Tops toe in slightly. Yeah. And so. They're not perpendicular to the ground. Right. This would be pretty much straight up and down. And then that is what, a little more of what we're looking for. So um, again, what do they call that angle maybe? 10 degrees. Um, He's listening, so. 20. 20 degrees. That's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. But you can see on off. any of these pictures, I can clearly see that one's tipped in. I can clearly see that one's tipped in. And that's just typical of cats, slit pupil cats. Yep. So now at this point, you're going to want to make sure Brett's concentrating on the depth so that they're, they're the same. And, and the pupil angle. Yeah, and the pupil angle and the um, angle in relation to the, Tom had talked about him being focused So he's straight ahead, forward. but not straight ahead. Yeah. So we're going to tip him back just a little bit. I'm sorry if you're getting the back of my head again, but I'm going to try to get in and make sure. And now, there, of all the different kind of eyes, you're going to be working with glass eyes, you're going to be working with acrylic eyes, you're going to be working with plastic eyes. Um, be careful. I notice you're using a pin, yeah. and those are acrylic eyes, which will scratch very easily, but I notice you're using it around the edges that's going to be under the skin and in the clay areas. Um, yeah, so absolutely. be a little careful. Um, Watch the kind of tools you use with acrylic eyes because they can scratch. And a scratch can be difficult to get out. I think we're pretty close in focus there. So now we have 
kind of the focus of the animal out into the room and now we would just build simply build that muscle shape around the perimeter mm -hmm. um, and we'll do that again with with critter clay a bobcat there's so little so little uh, muscle there you really don't need much clay but um, for you guys that haven't done this a lot some of you this is old hat and you'll go right to it and don't even think about shapes but um, or or amounts of clay but one good trick um, to make sure that you have the same amount of clay on the left side as you do the right side is to roll out a little roll of clay and then split it in half and now this is the the amount I'm going to use on this side and this is the amount I'm going to use on that side and so they should be relatively close in size and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to just fashion the top lid quick. And I'm going to start here. And you had mentioned that we're oftentimes the upper lid will cover the top of the pupil. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to do that. And when I, I'll turn this just a little bit. As we shape this, I'm not going to be so concerned with how it joins the mannequin as I am just the shape, just where the clay meets the glass and making sure that we create that nice cat-like lid. And notice the front corner being lower than the top, the back corner. Back corner of the eye will come back like so. And I'm just going to break that off. And then we'll fashion this and, and smooth it up here in just a few minutes. It's way too heavy as it is right now, but we'll bring a lot of that clay back out. But I just want to focus on what that arc and shape is on the upper lid. And then it helps to repeat the same process on the other eye before you get too far ahead of yourself. And I'm just positive there are cat people out there watching <laughs> that are going, what in the world is he doing? Yeah, but they're not going to have his nice looking cat. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but again, I'm just kind of focusing on the shape of that upper lid. We'll worry about the, where it joins the, the mannequin later. Um, and then I'm just going to look. Get it as close as you see. can to looking nice and symmetrical from side to side and don't forget you're going to slide a skin over this you're going to get glue all over everything um, and we're going to have a lot of fine tuning next week after we yeah. put the head on i'm just going to thin off some of that so my lids don't look quite so puffy and then we'll just come back and do the lower lid in the lower lid you can see has a nice swale to it. Um, upper lid is a little more on the flat side. Valley of the lower lid pretty much in the middle. Kind of. right? And we talk about uh, when we teach people to do set deer eyes, a three corner eye set. And a three corner eye set is the first corner is the where the caruncle is. Second corner is goes up a little straighter, makes a little bend, and goes to the third corner, which is higher than the first corner. And it's very similar in mammals of all sorts, even people. Absolutely. Yeah, even, even in people you can see that. Yep, sit around a table sometime and look at people's eyes and you will be able to detect the three-corner, what, what I refer to as a three-corner eye set. Just be careful they don't catch a stare. Yeah, at don't them. be staring. Um, and I've got just a little extra right here in the front corner. Again, metal tool, acrylic eye, be very, very, very careful. I got a special um, we do bamboo have some one here. Little rubber, oh, your bamboo tool would be a great one. Those little rubber, um, rubber tools are nice for this too. Um, something about like that and again this is just rough um, 
I mean, he's starting to look like, like something. To kind of get you in the ballpark. Something else that I, I think is really important, and um, I don't have the measurement sheet here for this bobcat, but whenever we skin an animal, whether it's a deer, um, you know, elk, moose, bobcat, whatever it happens to be, we call it the E measurement, which is from the front corner of the right eye to the front corner of the left eye with calipers. And that is super, super helpful yes. because if you have to stretch that skin out, it changes what that animal was. That E measurement is really helpful. So as you're taking nose to eyes and neck circumferences and things like that, um, just take a E measurement and jot it down on your um, measurement sheet would be very helpful for you. And that little mannequin came to life pretty fast. Yeah, not too bad. Um, and then he's got just a little bit of tuck in the front, which I could extend that clay forward a little. And now we have a lot of body work to do on him, so we'll probably wreck our eye set and have to do it over, but we'll have it done for you for next week. And then, yeah, and, and before we would mount him, we would get our ears positioned. There's a little, um, a little swell up above the eye, which is included on the mannequin. It's nice to have a little bit of clay to work with there, but um, I don't think we're going to include that just yet. I would do that just before we put the skin on. That way we don't mm -hmm. damage it. But And if you um, were storing your eyes like this for a long period of time, we take a wet... Um, rag or wet paper yeah. towel, damp, put it over there and wrap it with plastic yeah. and you can keep these for several days. Good? Close? I think so. In Good the job. neighborhood anyways. And someone wins this nice new cap. Yes, Courtney Haverfield. Courtney? Yes. Um, this is a classy hat. And how did she win that? She liked and shared last week's live video. Wow. Yeah. So make sure to do so oh, to yeah. get entered in. And she gets that with her first order? That's correct, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. Well, next week we'll proceed. I think we should be sewing next week. I doing the head. So. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll fine tune oh, sure. the head and make yeah. the head look really, really nice like a bobcat probably mount the head almost yep. Yep. And, then, and then and we'll, then we'll probably talk about feet we got paws to deal with and things like that yep.